So now that we have VMware Workstation Pro right down here installed on our Windows 11 PC, let's go ahead and download our first virtual machine. And for this, we're going to install a default Kali Linux image that's available out on their website. So to do this, we'll just go to a browser. We'll type in download Kali Linux. You can see I've got it in my history here. And that'll take us to the Get Kali Linux site. Now, the cool thing about this, I won't go into a lot of details. These are all the images that are available. So we have Kali Linux, Linux images available for Raspberry Pi, for example, on ARM, mobile, in the cloud, uh, even the Windows subsystem for Linux containers. And of course, the traditional ISO files that you might be used to either burning on a USB you know, or using in virtual machines. So in this case though, we're gonna use default images that are already created for virtual machines. So we'll go in there and as you can see, there's images of the current version, in this case, 2024.4. So you'll pick whatever the latest version is uh, for all the main virtualization software technologies. So since we're doing VMware, We'll go ahead and download VMware. Now, this next part, if you want, you can skip it, but because I am a cybersecurity instructor, I create videos for cybersecurity students, and that means the next step we're gonna do is quickly confirm the checksum, the SHA hash, against the file that we're downloading to make sure that somewhere in between we're not getting a manipulated or modified version that we would expect to get from the Kali Linux website. So we've got this hash here and as soon as the file downloads, I'm gonna pause while it completes, we'll go ahead and use PowerShell to confirm that the two hashes match. All right, so now if we come up here, we can see that our download is complete. What we're gonna do is I've opened up PowerShell here. I've already pre-configured, so you could pause this if you'd like. And we're gonna run this get file hash with, an, with a SHA-256 to make sure that the hash we get from our file we downloaded matches the hash that Kali Linux gives us on their website. So this should take only a few minutes, a few seconds, I should say, to run, um, depending on your system speed, et cetera. So you can see I've got it back. I can look at it and see that it matches. This means I can trust the file that I just downloaded not to have been manipulated in any way. Uh, and I can continue with a great deal of confidence with the installation. Now, since our download is a 7-zip compressed file, we're gonna need 7-zip. So if you don't have it, just go back out to your browser, download 7-zip, and go to the website here, download the 7-zip software that you need. Now, real quick, before we decompress the file, I wanna make sure I know where the file's going. And I want you to know that by default, when you install VMware, the default file path is going to be that it creates a folder called virtual machines within your documents folder. Now, in my case, I have a laptop with two SSDs. Thus, I put the VMs on the alternate SSD, which makes it easy for me to re reinstall my operating system if something goes wrong, back them up, etc. Plus, I get the performance of the second SSD for the VM. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna come in and create a new folder and I'll pause while I do this. So here's that folder right there and I'm gonna um, decompress that zip folder into here so I know where all the files are. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'll go back to my downloads here. I'm gonna right click, in my case, show more options, find the seven, seven zip software extract the files and from here I'm going to navigate out to that D drive and to virtual machines and that folder that I created so that it will decompress the files there I'll say okay start to compress the files now this shouldn't take very long again depending on your computer performance I'll go ahead and pause while it completes 
Now, before we move on, because this kind of freaks people out, when you get that default image, it's gonna you know, put it in an additional folder, not a big deal, but it's gonna create all of these files. And as you can see, some of these are virtual disk files. What it's done is broken up that virtual disk into many files for performance, especially if we were to move or migrate this virtual machine. Okay. Normally what I'll do is I'll change this setting and I'll show you that in another video where we install a virtual machine from an ISO. But in this case, we are ready to go. So all we have to do is close this. We're going to open up our VMware software and we could just click here to open up a VM, but I'm going to do it from the file. So I'm going to go file, open. I'm going to navigate out to that D drive virtual machines, Kali Linux image, there we are, and it's gonna bring up the file that I need to start the virtual machine with, which is a .vmx file. So I'll just double click on that. It'll start to populate that in here. Looks like I had another one, um, not a big deal. So here is the one that we just populated. It's all ready to go. So let's go ahead and power it up. We'll log in for the first time and we'll call this video good. Now, stay tuned if uh, before you leave because I'm gonna show you, you can see that I have a high DPI monitor here and that can make virtual machines a little bit difficult. So I'm gonna just show you a real quick trick uh, that Kali Linux has included in on these VMs that will increase the font size and the icon size of those images. So for this default machine, since we didn't load the OS ourselves, uh, the default username is Kali and the password is Kali. You're gonna wanna make sure that you change that for your VM. So here was that bonus tip. We're gonna come up to applications here. I'm gonna type in hi and get to this Kali high DPI mode. Now, if you'll notice, that's gonna change this. It runs a quick script. It makes the fonts bigger the icons bigger and it's going to be much easier especially when you're using a command prompt to a terminal excuse me uh, to run code run scripts run commands etc take care i hope this helps have a great day